Y'all can see I got another project on the trailer. I'm getting dropped off. I know I'm always saying I ain't gonna take no more work, but it's hard. I love what I'm doing. And this here gonna be a quick job. He want me to do the... Um, well, I'll wait till you take it off the trailer. Not the trailer, but the truck. And I'll tell you more about it because you might can't hear me right now because the truck gone. See that roof in Okay, we finna jump in the 89 Caprice. And I'm gonna take you around back. We're gonna get started started on it, but before we get started on it, I'm gonna give you a walk around. And I'll show you what we're working with. Guess we'll leave it running. Sound like it got a little belt squeak going on. But it's LS Watt. I don't know where the squeak coming from. Let me cut it off. Hit it again. One turn. Turn key. I don't know what size motor it is. I don't know if it's a 5360 or what. Let Nicely done. Be honest with you. Just a uh, computer. But this is an 89 Chevy Caprice. I will be painting it. The owner 
He actually hit me up on YouTube in the comment section. He said he had two two caprices that need uh, the headliner done. Just the headliner. And that's what he actually wanted me to do. He sent me an email. I told him to send me an email, some pit, pictures of the inside and what he need done. He had sent me some pictures. So we was uh, communicating through email back and forth, back and forth. Then I said, okay, I, I accepted the job. And then he said, he wanted this one here done first. And he said, uh, once I get it, could I recommend him a paint man? So I seen the body condition. So I said, shoot, I accept, you know. I'm finishing up on this other job that I'm doing. So that's how we got here. And he don't want the jams done. That's a plus right there. He said he was gonna flip it, you know, paint it and sell it. He got some 26 inch forges on, well not on it, but he want me to paint also. He gotta get some new tires. So, I guess, anybody looking to buy box Chevy with a panoramic LS swap. It's gonna be freshly painted. He going back black with a gray pinstripe on it. Pretty sure he'll throw the D wheels in. He like got some brand new tires on it. With the 26s. I gotta do some body work up here. I'll probably do that first. Let me pop the uh, trunk. See what we got in the trunk. Yeah, a lot of folks be wondering how to get in touch with me. It's gonna be first through email, not email, but uh, in the comment section. And I feel, if I feel like you serious, now I'll, I'll take the job, but a lot of folks be playing, wasting my time, I ain't got time to be playing. But, this is what we got, we got some fresh mats here. The headliner gonna be this color gray, I gotta order. It seems like a nice, ain't no rust or nothing. Nice looking Caprice. Still good, it's cracked here and there, but still on now. Like he just replaced the uh, bumper fillers. This in here need tighten up. Another screw in it or something. I was looking. It looked like it's been painted before because I could see paint on the uh, trim. Might have been touched up a time or two over the years, but you can see paint on the trim. But we're gonna take all that off. We're gonna take all the trim and molding. And I might take the handles off. Knowing me, I will. I be saying I ain't gonna do it, but I wind up doing it anyway. But this is it here, y'all. This is our next project. It's gonna be a quick flip. I ain't gotta take no doors and nothing off. No deck lid or the uh, hood. Let me show you on the inside some more. I had to roll up one of those. I think this is just a basic caprice. The interior look decent as well, to be honest with you. Look like when they put the top in, some of the trim that broke some of the clips. So I'm gonna have to get some more of those. Figure that out. Let me uh try to get this top going. I can at least do that.
That's the vent. Let's see. That's the top. I think he said this came out of uh, a 300C. But I don't know how they got this hooked up though. It's hooked up to the interior dome light. You can see. <laughs> That's not going to work there. The only way you can operate your top with the door open. Or cut your dome lights on. Let me see. Let me show you. Let me shut this door. Probably won't even work. Let's see. Ain't no action. Now let me open the door. I don't know why they did it like that. So I'm going to have to fix that. But ain't no big deal. But y'all stay tuned. More work. We're good to go. Got the caprice around here. Let's start on this body work. I hope the sun ain't glaring up the video. But before we touch anything, I'm gonna take this trim off here and go from there. Get it out the way. I'm just gonna remove this trim for now. The top and this here. And then we uh, go from there. I like to remove everything I can when removing this trim here around the windshield and the glass. Nine times out of 10, you're gonna break some clips. So be looking to buy some more clips. But I'd rather remove it and try to mask it up and get paint on it. It's a lot faster. Then you get a better paint job. You can see it's been removed before though because they got some plastic clips here and the metal ones but it's not hard to do just get you a pry tool this in here kind of big stick on the uh, back side of it lift up it'll come right on off
finished up there's three more coats of primer we're gonna let it dry up then we'll unmask it install the glass back in I've been trying to clean the glass up I'll show you how I operate let me take it to the other side I'm still gonna sand this once I get ready to paint the car I'll be sanding this with something like 320 or 400 that's gonna be on down the line I'm gonna do the rest of the body work and then I guide coat this and sand the whole car at the same time this is what it's looking like I think it turned out good let me step back for you Tried to clean it up a little bit because all that sand and dust was on the car. After I had finished the bottle work on the roof here, I started going around trying to find my dings and dents here and there, but it started raining on me, so I had to stop. So get you caught up with what I did I had took a red sharpen went around when you're trying to find dings and dents you got to look at it at an angle at different angles because you might not see it this way but if you go on the other side you might see it you'll see it uh, from the glare but it's a lot of dings and dents on this deck lid also on the hood it's pretty much over the whole entire car but on this deck lid it's a lot of push-ups you can see right here I circled it and I put a P so I can know I need to knock this area here down and then fill it. But on just the dings, I just circled it like right here. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen it though, but I tried to use a red marker, but the rain somewhat washed it off. Let me see if you can see it now. But I can show you. It's a lot of them here now. Push out. Just all over the car. But I'm just keep looking because I like to mark my spots. Then as I be walking around the car, I might see something else and I find it and mark it.
finished up with the primer. I put one coat on the sides, two on the deck lid, and on the hood. You probably could tell my gun, was it wasn't shooting right. It was coming out real slow. It was somewhat stocked up, but I continued spraying. It took me a long time to finish, though. But I can see I got some tiger stripes on the hood, also on my deck lid. But it don't matter because it's primer, and I'm going to be sanding anyway. And you might can see this primer here is a different tone that I just sprayed than what I did uh, a while back because this Uricam and this U-Paw. But I think we're going to be good. Everything turned out great. We're going to be uh, wet sanding this here with 400, maybe 320 because I'm going to put a seal on it. So it'll cover up them 320 scratches. And let me show you the mirrors. I still got to do a little sand on one of them. The passenger side, it was dented up right here. I got to sand that down. I wanted to spray this when I sprayed the car though, but I just wanted to get the car done. So I'll do this later. But the driver's side, the cable was broke, so I had to order another one. You can see it snap right there. And the other one is right here. It done came in. I may have to scuff this up. Shoot this as as well. But I'll do that at a later date. I'm gonna unmask the car. Well, I'm gonna wait till tomorrow. Put it outside, unmask it. I'll probably cut you back on. Uh, you can see we got the car back in right before it started back raining. Seems like it's always raining when I get ready to start doing some wet sanding. Which is good if you're doing it outside. You ain't got to worry about no water. But it done got dark, so we're on the inside. You see I got some soap and water and some 320 grit in my bucket. Yes, we're going to be using 320 because I'm going to be spraying the sealer. So the sealer cover those 320 scratches. But if you're not spraying no sealer, I advise you to use something like 400 grit and we got two different blocks we got a rigid block here and a soft block I'm gonna be using this soft block on areas like this here they got contours and the edges like on that edge there because if you use this block here you might get close to the edge and cut into it and scratch it up so we're gonna be using two different blocks in some areas we'll just be using our fingers so we're going to let this sandpaper soak a minute or two, let it get soft. Then we'll start uh, blocking. We're going to be trying to remove all this guide coat. It's there for really two reasons. It's there to show you all your low areas. Also, it's there to show you what you haven't sanded yet. So, just say if I didn't have this guide coat on here, I might miss a spot if I don't just constantly rub my hand across it because if you rub your hand across it you'll know what's been saying and what's not been saying but the guide code is going to help
finally got finished with the wet sand. It took me two days just to wet sand. I went and got a fresh bucket of water just to wipe it down, make sure I don't miss nothing. Make sure all the guy coat is up. I had to go back and put some one pot glaze and put it right here because it had a, uh, a paint line. It was chipping. So I'm going to smooth it out. Let me wipe it down, then we'll inspect it. I think we're good to go now. It's a long process, but it was well worth it. It will be in the long run. Once I spray that paint on here. Doing auto body and paint, it's like I would say it's 80% sanding. That's all you mostly do. And you remember after I sprayed this uh, last coat of primer, it was all one uniform color. And if you see all the different tones, those was high areas. If I would've never wet sanded this here, you would've seen those areas. See like right here, all that was high. That's why it's good to do your final wet sand. See those areas there? But I'm gonna take care of that right before I shoot the base. I'm gonna spray a sill on it. And it's gonna make it one uniform color. So y'all stay tuned. just finished up with the wet sand I was looking to pull it out wash it up bring it back in and start masking it off but and put some paint on it well my LED lights haven't came in see my light out there got one out over on the other side also in the front and they should be here tomorrow so I don't want to paint the car without good lights in the booth so I'm thinking about you know I got to paint the mirrors in a way I'm gonna paint them separate I got a replacement mirror and I got to prep up that one then I also got a little spot on the old mirror on the passenger side so I'm thinking about just pulling the car out bringing the mirrors in and putting some paint on them while I wait I can be doing something so let me pull this car out. we'll bring the mirrors in and get started okay we got the mirrors this is the passenger side you can see I had already started doing the body work earlier and this is the driver's side, and the cable is broke. See up in there? It'll never stay in place, so I had to order a new one. Here's the part number for the new one. I think it was about 50 bucks. The only thing I gotta do with this one here is scuff it up and shoot some paint on it. And I'm gonna be scuffing it up with this uh, Scotch Sprite. Maroon Scotch Sprite 07447. And once I sand this down, get it smooth, I'm going to shoot some primer on it, some self itching primer. I'm going to hit it with 180 just to knock it down smooth so it won't take me so long sanding it. Then I go back and hit it with some 320. I got that in my soap and water. All right, let's get started. Results. It's three coats of clear. See a few nibs, trash nibs here now. But other than that, I think it turned out good. Plus, I made some progress while I was waiting on the lights. 
and when the lights come in tomorrow I'll wash the car up bring it back in mask it off clean the booth out well I clean the booth out before I bring it back in then we'll put some paint on the car stay tuned Shiver ready to be painted now. Only thing left now is washing it up and cleaning out the shop. But I gotta take the mirrors out the shop though. I painted those yesterday. So let's go in there and check them out. Here's the mirrors. Yeah, I think it turned out real good. We just gonna Sit these outside in the sun, let them cure on up. Then we'll get ready, clean up all this junk I got. I, I do everything up in here, so fiberglass, paint work, everything, motor work. But we finna clean it up and hopefully our lights come by the time I get through cleaning up so I can replace. Three lights, I gotta replace this one, that one, and this one up front.
one coat of Scylla. On a couple of spots I had went back over it. Like right here. It's still flashing off. Once it dry it's gonna be flat. Some of it I already done turned flat. I had went back over this area here, that's why it's still wet. Also this spot. Guess we mix up this base. We should be able to get away with two coats. Two coats of the jet black. My gun was spitting all over the place. But I finally got it laid down. You can see some areas look like it's dry. Just wasn't shooting right for some reason. But I'm gonna bury it with this clear coat. Shouldn't be no big problem. Let's mix this clay up. You ready to lay it down?
All right, y'all. Finished up. No problems at all. Just a little orange peel. But you know, you're going to get that. You get that from the factory. A little orange peel and trash here now. But I will be flow coating. I'm going to let this sit. Well, this three coats are clear. I'm going to let this sit about two to three days. Then I sand it back down, flow coat it. Then I let it sit for about a week. And then I sand it down, cutting buff. So I'm still got a ways to go. But the biggest part is done. Spraying it. No runs at all. I think the body work turned out good as well. Let me step back and see if I can show it to you. Black look good, but it's hard to keep it up. It show up everything. I never liked the black car. I don't think I ever owned one either. But y'all stay tuned. Where well, I said it when I run, I just see him one right here. If you're seeing it right here, came out of nowhere, y'all. But it's all good. I want y'all to stay tuned for the flow coat and other vids and other vids after this here. three days since I sprayed the car I see a lot of dieback from the clear I use it was some value clear I had never used this clear before it wasn't no hot solid clear I just tried something because I had planned on putting three more coats of clear on here so I just used the value clear just to sand it back down because I knew I was going to have trash in the paint you might could see the die back here in the trash done shrunk. But I had ran out, I had sprayed a whole gallon of clear on here, the value clear. And I had ran out before I had made it with three coats. You could tell the difference right here. I'm not sure if it's showing through the camera. You can see the orange peel real good on this here. But from here back, I sprayed high solid clear. And it looks a lot better from this part here. See the orange peel compared to the high solid. And also, I got a run over here that I got to get out. I seen this when I had finished painting it right here see this high solid I had topped this off with high solid on this side this whole side but the hood is scraped value clear 
My shirt is showing the orange peel. Like I'm seeing it, but we're about to sand the whole car back down. I do the flow coat. I always like flow coating all my cars. For one, you get more protection on it, more coats of clear. See, I got three coats of clear now. I'm gonna sand this back down and I'm gonna put three more coats of clear. So I should have good protection. Also, I can get the orange peel out. And the trash, which it's gonna be some more trash eventually, I know. And then some folks be asking me why I just don't put six coat six coats of clear from the jump on here. Because after all the coats I done sprayed, the orange peel just keep building up. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sand all this flat and start off fresh. So that means I just got three coats, chances of getting orange peel. From from the jump, I sprayed a silla, a coat of silla, uh, two coats of base, then three coats of clear. That's like six coats. So the orange peel had built up. But we finna sand it down, and I got two different blocks here: rigid block, put it in my water, soap and water, and a soft sponge block. I got some 400 grit and 600 I think I'm going to use the 600 you got to be careful using 400 especially if you don't know how many coats of clear you got on here but I should have plenty plus I didn't let it sit up so the clear is somewhat done harden up especially if you're trying to cut it right after paint day after the clear is still soft and you can scratch it up real easy and you can dig into it and cut through we're going to use this 600. I'm going to tear it in half, put it in my soap and water, let it soak for a minute or two, then I'll cut it back on. Now ready for my flow coat now. I got the whole entire car dulled off. That's how you want it to look. You don't want no shiny areas. And you want to spread at least two coats, two to three coats of clear. And you can reduce it if you like. All right, let's mix this clear up. We'll get the spraying.
coats are clear for the flow coat. Still got a little trash in it, but it ain't no big deal. Like I always say, consider where I'm spraying that. Plus, I'm going to be cutting and buffing. I couldn't buff all my cars, so I cut all the trash out. But it's looking good, though. That's one thing about black. It show no shine. A lot of folks say black hard to spray. I think it's easy. The hard part is trying to for us keep it up and buffing because it show a lot of scratches when you start cutting the buffing. But spraying it, it's pretty easy. I don't know how many of y'all been following this beer from the jump, but it looked totally different now. If you can recall, this here was rusted and split. I had to weld that back together on both sides. And it had a lot of dings and dents all over the car. Y'all go back and check out the uh, videos out on the playlist. But stay tuned for the cutting buff. Also got to cut that run out, just seen it. Let's see if we can see that reflection. six inch forges back for the box shaving we got some fresh tires on them some Lexanis now I'm gonna start cleaning them up and painting them I haven't decided how I was gonna paint them the owner just wanted me to paint the lips black but I don't think I'm gonna paint the lips because I want to leave some chrome on them because the car gonna be black and chrome so if I paint the lips black there won't be no chrome on the wheels just be the brush so I think we're going to leave the lips chrome because the curb rash ain't too bad. This is the worst of it right here. But I done seen worse. So we're going to take them apart. I was thinking about, I know I'm going to paint the back, the back barrel. I'm going to paint the back barrel black. And I haven't decided how it's going to do the face of the or wheel. I might paint this black, that black, and leave all this here brush. But once I take them apart and clean them up, I'll be done came up with something then. See, I got some carpet here. I'm just going to lay them face down. Get me a half inch wrench. Start breaking the bolts where the nuts are loose. Then we'll go clean them up. brushed air
Then we'll get ready to clear everything. After I had sprayed the wheels upright, I came back the next morning and did a wet sand with 800 grit just to level everything off. Then I laid the wheels flat because the clear, it levels out a lot better when it's flat and you can get it a lot smoother and a lot shinier with lesser orange peel. I got the barrels outside, they drying up. I just got through spraying this hill, so I'm going to let this sit overnight. I'll probably let it sit at least two days before I start putting the uh, screws and bolts back in. I think it turned out good. I'll cut it back on whenever I get ready to start putting everything back together. It's been three days since I painted everything. Actually four since I painted the barrels. So now we're gonna start putting everything back together. We got the center cap. We're gonna put the Forgiato sand back on there. We're just gonna use some emblem glue to do that. It goes here. And then we're gonna put the face back on the lip and the barrel. And it the nuts, they torque down to around 22 pounds. So we're gonna get the torque wrench out and once we tighten them up, we're gonna torque them down. So let's get started. Find the finish with all the wheels. It was more work than I expected. I expected I was gonna get done a lot quicker than what I did for us from start to finish. What took the time is taking all these faces off. But I think it was worth it the way it came out. See, I got the Porgiato sign back there. I think it's gonna look good for us once once I put them on the car. That back barrel black. Then the windows. Black brush and chrome. I think that's a good look. Show you the back side of that. Y'all stay tuned for the test fit. I think I'm going to squat it, so I'm going to have to do some modifications for us getting it to squat. But I have videos on that as well. Y'all get in the comment section. Tell me what y'all think. Is it a win or a loss? I actually pulled it inside and started on the cutting buff. But now, I think we're going to uh, let it sit up some more because I, I pulled it back out this morning. But you can see all this pollen and landing back on it. So we're going to let it sit up some more and cure up a little bit more because I think we're going to do this dash here, fiberglass this dash. Let me get in here and show you. You can see the dash got some cracks going on so we're gonna fiberglass I'm not sure uh, what color 
I don't know if you're gonna go with like a satin look or a gloss look, but I could at least start on it until you get back with me. So let me take it out and we'll go from there. All right, we got the dash out. Bring it in here. We'll check it out. First, we're gonna clean it off because it's dusty. Let me give me a soapy rag and we'll clean this dash off. Here's the dash. It's been a couple of days since I finished it. I've just been letting it sit up. I'm gonna bring the car back in now and finish cutting and buffing it. Cause I had started the cut and buff it then. The owner decided he wanted the dash done, so I pulled it back out and let it harden up a little bit more. But once I finished the car, I installed the dash and give you another look at it, but I'm going to go get the vents now and I'll put the vents in and show you how they look. It's been two days since I did the flow coat. Now I'm gonna pull it out, let it sit up for about a week, let the clear harden up, and then I start sanding on it for the cutting buff. Because you don't want to start sanding on it now because it's clear, it's still shrinking. So you want to let it do what it do before you start sanding on it. I'm just gonna unmask it, and pull it out. Yeah, it's been a minute since I shot that last clip. Now we finna pull it back in and start on the cutting buff. 
It's been sitting for probably two weeks now. Should be good and hard, ready to cut and buff now. I've been pulling it in and pulling it out. As you can see, a lot of pollen and everything else done fell on it. That's what I like to do once I paint it. I like to let it sit at least a week, let it harden up, cure up, because you don't want to start cutting and buffing if the paint ain't, you know, hardened and did what it need to do because you'll be cutting from that. So we finna uh, wash it up, get all this up off of it, take it on the inside, and get to work. All right, we're in the shop now. Now I can show you all the imperfections that we're gonna be addressing. It's a lot of dirt nibs and trash on the hood. And it's also some runs. I know it's one here I just seen. I can't remember where all the runs was because it's been a minute since I painted the car. I think it was some on this side. Here's a sag here. A couple of them there. It's a run, a two up here. But I'm just gonna go around the entire car to make sure I cut all the runs down. And we're gonna be cutting the runs with uh, 1500 on the block. So we need to tackle that first before we do the rest of the car. Knock down the runs. Let me take you up here and show you what I'll be using. Okay, these are the different grits that I'll be using on this job here. Every job I do different. This time, since it's a black car, I'm not going to do no blocking uh, with the block. Because a lot of times you'll leave scratches in it. So I'm just going to use the, well, I'm a block. The runs out. That's the only thing I'm gonna use with the block. The rest of it I'm gonna use the uh, DA, and we're gonna be cutting it with 1500. Then we're gonna step it up the 2000, then on up the 3000. Cutting and buffing consists of two things. Cutting is when you sanding it, removing all the imperfections. Then buffing is polishing the shine back, getting the shine back. But it's more than one step in each process, like cutting. You could do it three steps, 1,500, 2,000, 3,000, or you can go even further. Or you don't have to do that many steps, but I usually do three steps on each. Three steps on the uh, cut, three steps on the buff. On the buff, I use like a, a compound then a polish, then a fan polish. But we'll go over that on down the line. Right now, we're gonna concentrate on these runs. I'm gonna use this rigid block, and I'm just gonna take a sheet of this here and wrap it around the block. And I'm gonna take you back here where the runs at, and we'll cut them off. We'll cut them out.
here's the results finally finished with this cutting buff it's a long process but it's well worth it once you get it done I'm gonna walk around the car now I can start putting it back together now gotta put the locks handles on also the panoramic gotta put it in Still got to do the headliner. Got to put all the trim. I'll be pinstriping it. Putting some molding on the side as well. It's going to be the fun part. Putting it back together. What y'all think about it? They got new headlights. I gotta put the grill back on. Emblem. Also got the, I got a uh, test fit the 26s that I painted. But it shouldn't take long to do all that. A couple days, I would say. Got new one on the channel for the glass. Window sweeps, they new. A lot of folks don't like painting black or cutting buffing it. They show up everything though. In a little scratch, it's gonna show. My SD card had got full, so my camera had cut off. But I was saying I didn't clean this very well here. Huh? Plus, I got to get that compound out that crack down. But I'll do that on the final wash. Once I get everything back together, then I do a detail. I think what I'm gonna do now, I'll probably start working on this uh, headliner for the roof. A little spider. Y'all stay tuned. Just finished up with the cutting buff. Now we're finna start putting everything back together. I think the first thing I might do is start putting the handles and the locks on. Because I gotta put those on before I put the door panel back in. I also gotta put the glass in. But I gotta put the window sweep in before I put the glass in. So I think I'm gonna do it like that. Also the top. Yeah, I think that's what I do. I go ahead and put these locks and handles on. Then I go from there. I got a lot of stuff, new stuff that I'm gonna go round up and I'll show you what I got.
box should be put back together or was everything that was on it when I got it and a few extras like the emblems those was brand new I tried to clean it up and it started sprinkling on me so I pulled it back in now it start raining I might pull it back out As you can see I still gotta do the side molding and the pinstripes that's gonna be on another video and I'm working on the headliner now as we talk so y'all stay tuned but I still got a few more videos before I'm actually done with it oh I did put the top in it up for us the box shaving I pretty much got the inside put back together now I gotta put the glass back in I got it here but before I put it back in I'm spraying this here because this used to be beige I still gotta spray a little bit in the middle it used to be the same color as this here and the headline is gonna be gray so I'm trying to color match it I was gonna mask this up, but I think I'm gonna take it apart. Then I could spread a lot better, be a lot easier as well. So I'm gonna take it apart, then I'm gonna finish spraying this here, and I'm gonna spray this at the same time. And then we'll get started on the headliner. up with the headliner here's the third brake light let me show you the headliner oh I got the shade open let me close it it's the light Shade. I might need to crank the car because it doesn't like got enough power. 
somebody. Let me show you the panoramic. That's the shade there. Put it on vent. Let me open it all the way, the shade all the way. All right, y'all stay tuned. So I done kept the better. But y'all stay tuned. Uh, I'll probably test fit the wheels next on the next video. Test fit the wheels, then I gotta do the pin stripe and the side molding. But y'all stay tuned then. Test fitting the wheels. This is the front here. This is the back. Y'all want to see how I painted these? Look down in the description. I also had a video popping up. But I painted the back of the, uh, the back barrel. And up in here, black. And I re clear coated the brush. We gonna uh, see what we gotta do to fit these on the box Chevy. So let me get my jack. I got my uh, Milwaukee here. I just need to go get my jack, then we'll get started jacking it up. Test fitting. We got the jack, and we got some lug nuts here. Seven sixteen. I think he got these off uh, Amazon or eBay. Which he gonna have to get some longer studs eventually, but we just got these to test fit. And he gonna have to change up the lug nuts when he get the longer studs. Got the panoramic on tip. All right, let's get this wheel on.
about to go down with it. This is what we get. The owner wanted to squat it, so I got some air shocks. I guess we're gonna do another video installing those because I know this video here. I just go ahead and upload this one. But we got some air shocks that we're gonna put on it to squat it. It look like we're good to go for us. Everything clear. If anything, I got to trim just a little bit. But y'all tell me what y'all think about it without squatting it. I need to pull it out. Let me pull it out right quick. Recall the last video that we done. We had mounted the 26 inch sports autos on the box Chevy. And the owner, he want the back to be squatting. I think we're gonna be good for us cutting. If anything, we'll have to cut a little bit off this here. But it seems like I'm gonna have plenty of clearance. But once I squat it, I know more. But on this front, it's sitting way too low. We're gonna have to lift this front up because if we don't it's gonna be scrubbing you're not gonna be able to turn and we're gonna be doing that on the budget on this video here because everybody they don't have that money to buy coilovers and new suspension and some folks do have the money but don't want to spend it so you know we're gonna be doing this on the budget i'm gonna take you inside and show you what we're gonna be using and you can do it a little over hundred dollars you can get it done or you could spend five thousand to six thousand dollars getting coilovers and control arms stuff like that which that's you know that's what i'm gonna do but everybody might not want to go that route so i'm gonna show you how to do it without going that route so let me take you inside and i'm gonna show you two different ways of doing it Third brake light, panoramic. Okay, let's see what we got. And this doing it on the budget, y'all. Get you some knuckles for the front. I got some inch and a half. It give you up to an inch and a half lift. It's four on. I'm gonna put four on each spring on the front. So that should give me three inches. So that's gonna take care of the front. Now on the back, can y'all guess what we got here? We got some air shocks. Here's the port number. 88946598, AC Deco. You can get these for under $100. You can get them online or you can go to Advanced Auto Parts, AutoZone. O'Reilly's. Get you some air shocks. And these here, 
You can go to AutoZone to get you a pack for about $15 a piece. Just the air shocks. Pretty simple to install, but we're gonna be installing them. I'm show you how to do it. Now this doing it on the budget. That's what this video here about on the budget. Now let me show you what you can get if you ain't got no budget. Let me put this back up. Then I get the stuff out. For those that ain't got no budget. And this here, for all those big money folks. You got some coil overs here. i open them up and show them to you. Then I got some rear control arms, upper, adjustable, lower knot, but you can get lower adjustable. Then I got some front control arms, let me show you here. QA1. This the upper here. Upper. See, I got these here when I paid for them. They was like, uh, let me see. They was 449. That was about three to four years ago. I can only imagine how much they cost now. Then we got the lower here. Which I'm not gonna be doing no racing or nothing. I'm just doing it for looks. Oh, this is going on my two-door landau. I can't remember how much I paid for this, but I think it was more than the upper. I'm not sure. And then we got the coil over here. This is the. I'm not sure. This the front. The spring. show you the part number if I can find it. Mm. I'm not sure which one the part number, but that's the spring. Open this up for you. can see I never once I got these I just put them up never open them or nothing but I put them up once I cut y'all off and here's the, the rear the spring I don't know what this is here oh okay And I got some UMI. Lower and upper control arms. Like I said, the upper is adjustable. But my lower is not, which I don't need to be adjustable because I'm just running 26s. But if you're running 28s, you want to get you some adjustable ones for the lower. So you can move that rear end. I got some more hardware here. Well, I'm gonna put all these up and then we're gonna get started as far as installing everything on the budget. I just, I just wanted to show you what you can get if you ain't got no budget, you know what I'm saying? 
but let me get this put up. Okay, we pull it in. Guess we're gonna do the front first. We're gonna jack the front up, and then we'll take the wheels off. Then we'll go from now. You can see how low this front is. It's real low. It's lower than the back. Alright, we're gonna close this off. The owner, like I said before, he can always adjust it how he want it. But now he can even it out. It ain't gotta be locked, wop sided, one side had another. But I'm gonna, uh, um, it ain't got dark, so tomorrow. In the morning, I'm gonna pull it out and show you how it look outside. Cause you can't really get a good idea. But now you can see, you can barely see the tire if you're looking up under here. Check this side out. Same way you can barely see the tire. But I think we're good, problem solved. I'll cut y'all back on in the morning. All right, let's get out. I'm gonna show you what the squat look like. I pretty much got it down at its lower set. I'm gonna raise it back up once I get back to the shop. I just wanted to show you what the squat look like, but it can go a little bit lower. dust. That's why I don't like black. It's just so everything. But I still gotta do the pinstripes and the molding. Which that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna wipe it down. Then I do the pinstripes. So I'm going with uh, a gray and a red pinstripe. Matter of fact. Because the red is gonna actually match the red on it. Then this X thinking about putting some red in the uh, wheel right here. Haven't decided on it yet. Just get a little bit more red to play off of. But that's what she looked like, y'all. Look like it's even. You can see the top of the rim on this side where the car is actually not sitting even. Kind of on the hill. But yeah, this side look a little lower because the hill is sitting on. But y'all stay tuned for the uh, pinstripes and molding. Guess I get in it and get back to the shop.
about to wrap it up on the box shiver, y'all. This probably be the last video here. I got to do the pinstripes and the molding. We was going with a gray pinstripe, but since we got the LSX and it got a red, it got red in it, he decided to go red. But then I, and I started to think, how about go gray, then put a red quarter inch pinstripe at the bottom of the gray. Because I'm going to put a quarter inch pinstripe here on the wheels to give it a little bit more red play in it. I think that'll look decent. That's how I think. It's the top open. Still got to clean it up. You know, it's been sitting up once I did the squat. If y'all want to see that video, y'all go check out the playlist. It should be popping up as well. Alright, let's go ahead and pull it in and get started. Okay, we're in the shop ready to get started. Let me show you what we got back here. Here's the modem we're going with. It's black. Now I'll be cutting this with some shears that I got here. And the pinstripes we got, we got quite a few different ones. We got these red ones here. I don't think I'm going to use that. Then we got some gray. These two ones I'm going to use. Then we got some uh, two quarter inch ones. I'm going to use these for the wheels. And I'm going to put one at the bottom of the gray. Then we got a smaller gray. I'm not going to use that. I guess I don't know what, what item this came from. But, uh, let's see what this is. That's the installation for the molding. <coughs> Required to shears, scissors, razor blade. Got a razor blade. I got some shears. Rubbing alcohol, cleaning cloth. I got that. Really don't need no alcohol because I got fresh paint. Ain't no dirt or nothing on it, but I'm going to wipe it down. installation instructions I guess we'll get set up and I'm gonna start um, I got a couple of videos here on YouTube that I did two box series pinstripes but every time I do it different I'm gonna start up here I'm gonna work my way from front to back I start right here I'm gonna start with the gray pinstripe first then I carry on with the red Oh, I could put the molding on first. No, I'm gonna put the pinstripes on first. Stripes in the mold and look and the emblem move. Oh, forgot about the wheels. Like it turned out good. Gonna clean it up now. Once I clean it up, I'm going to cut y'all back on and give y'all the final video of the bill. I'm going to 
gonna polish the hood and the the top again. But other than that, I think we're done, y'all. I'm done with it y'all just finished up doing some touch ups as far as the polish seeing a few spots I had to go back over I gotta wipe it down I'm gonna wipe it down once I get it outside I wiped it down some in here but you still can see some of the residue here now but I'm gonna take it outside and give y'all a look at it outside then she'll be ready to go back to the owner let's get it outside go box should be complete everything I gotta do to it walk you around it go around a couple of times let you know what I done did to it I did the pinstripes side molding painted the wheels also squatted it put the pinstripes on the wheels new emblems Emily's on the trunk, new. Third brake light, did it. I think that's pretty much outside. New headlights and bezels. Panoramic. I'll open it up for you in just a second. Also, this mirror here was new. I had to replace fiberglass the dash. All right, let's go inside. Kind of fix some things on the door panels because he was missing free stuff. Fiberglass dash, I did. Also did the headliner. Let's uh, open the roof. See the shade. Still need detailing. Lights work. I'm going to put it on vent. Vent. Let me open the shade all the way. Yeah, if y'all want to see all the videos up to this point here, check out the playlist. Also, re uh, fabric that back piece that back there. I had to do a lot of fixing on some of these trim pieces, but did the best I could. He got uh, some caprice mats. I just didn't want to put it over here because I've been in and out. Uh, I think that's about it on this here. I didn't do the jams because he didn't want the jams painted, so didn't have to worry about that. But all the doors open and close good, no problem. And this car is for sale. Matter of fact, here's for sale. But 
right, y'all, stay tuned. Later on tonight, I'm going to drive to the gas station, try to get some gas station footage. Pulling up at the gas station, y'all. This is the last ride. 